Kia ora, thank you for in political history. Um, that was great. Apologies to everybody. Uh, I was coming down from Auckland this morning and we got uh, delayed. Uh, I'd, I'd like to say I'd find someone to blame, but I think I'm the 51% shareholder of the airline, so I can probably only look at myself uh, for that. Can I acknowledge um, both Anita and I see that there are other councillors in the room, Councillor Josh Trillin, who just walked through there, Jeff Haywood, others as well. I'm sure I'm not naming everyone, which is a dangerous thing to do at local government election time, uh, but it's great to see uh, everybody here. Uh, this is a terrific day, and again, I apologise for making you wait, but it's an announcement that's um, worth waiting for, because um, today we are announcing the funding uh, for the upgrade of a range of sporting facilities that will be connected with next year's FIFA Women's World Cup. Uh, I say often to people when I'm talking about next year's World Cup that I don't think New Zealanders quite understand what's coming to us. This will be the biggest sporting event that New Zealand has ever hosted, and I am incredibly excited about what that means for us, both in terms of hosting the event, bringing the world to Aotearoa New Zealand, but also what it means for a legacy in terms of football and a legacy in terms of facilities. And it's on both of those uh, points that I want to uh, talk today. So the announcement that we're making is that we will be investing around $19 million to support upgrades at 30 of 32 potential sporting facilities that have been earmarked for the FIFA tournament. Uh, these upgrades will include pitch upgrades, lighting and facility enhancements, and making our changing spaces appropriate for everybody who wants to use them. I have, over the last couple of years, opened a number of bathrooms and toilets. That wasn't in the job description uh, for the Minister of Sport and Recreation, but it is important that we create facilities that can be used safely and properly by every single person who comes to play uh, at a venue. Uh, as many of you will know, uh, the tournament itself next year will be played in both New Zealand and Australia. The New Zealand part of that tournament will be played in Auckland, Hamilton, here in Wellington and down in Dunedin. The range of training facilities um, and team bases, however, are potentially going to be in a number of other centres as well. And so as a result of that, today's announcement does include the upgrade of facilities in Auckland, Hamilton, Wellington, Dunedin, but also Christchurch, Napier, Tauranga and Palmerston North. Now we haven't finally, it's not we when I say this, FIFA have not finally selected uh, the, the training base uh, venues yet. So some of the venues that we'll be getting upgrades today may not actually end up being training base venues, but part of the legacy of this tournament is that we'll see facilities improve right around the country. Um, this is the first time that FIFA have decided to have both a team base camp and training facility as well as the uh, match venues. So it is an exciting opportunity for us to uh, build more of a legacy of this tournament beyond the extraordinary inspiration that I think footballers, both young women and young men, will experience from seeing the tournament here, but also the legacy that we can leave in terms of better facilities and better quality facilities. Seeing Shane Harmon down the back reminds me that this funding is not just about uh, the training venues and the team bases, but also about funding and support for the match venues themselves, and included within this is funding to support Eden Park, uh, the Waikato and Wellington Regional Stadium and Dunedin Stadium to make sure all of the facilities are at the international standard that they should be. One thing I tremendously admire about FIFA is they are absolutely adamant that the facilities and everything about the arrangements for the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023 will be the same as what we would expect for a Men's World Cup. That is exactly how it should be. These are professional sports people and New Zealand should and is making sure that the experience that they receive as part of coming to this tournament will be exactly the same as if it were at a Men's World Cup. 
Can I just end by thanking a number of people? Firstly, I want to thank uh, both the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment and Sport New Zealand. They are ultimately the funding sources uh, for what is happening today. The Sport New Zealand funding is part of the legacy funding that we share with New Zealand Football, and I acknowledge New Zealand Football today for the amazing work that they're doing along with the FIFA Organising Committee to get ourselves ready uh, for next year. I want to thank all of you for coming along today. I want to make a special acknowledgement of the young footballers who are here today. I really hope that over the course of this year, as we have the qualifying tournament uh, at the beginning of next year and the tournament itself, that you will be able to be part of something that is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and that you'll be inspired to go on, keep playing football, maybe represent New Zealand one day at a future World Cup, and that all of us will be extremely proud of our role in hosting this tournament. So I'm delighted today to announce the funding for these upgrades, and I thank you once again for coming. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Okay, now we're going to have Paula Hansen from New Zealand Football. Kia ora everyone. Um, thank you, Minister Robertson. It's always uh, great to hear your energy and commitment um, to uh, not just the tournament, but also our communities and uh, certainly for us across football in Aotearoa. So, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, ko Paula Hanson, toko ingoa, and I'm uh, privileged to hold the position of New Zealand Football's General Manager for the Women's World Cup Legacy and Inclusion. And just before I begin um, the New Zealand football perspective and recognition for this incredible event today, I wanted to take the opportunity to um, acknowledge and thank Ngāti Toa for your warm welcome here today, uh, for Minister Robertson, uh, for our MB, Sport New Zealand and FIFA colleagues, and for the team at New Zealand Football for all the work that has brought us to, to, to today's announcement. We too also welcome uh, our young future players uh, from the Wellington Phoenix Academy and uh, our local club, Western Suburbs. So today is a truly significant day for our communities throughout Aotearoa, New Zealand, both football and wider sporting whānau and our local communities. With government investment of around $19 million into facility upgrades at 30 potential training sites, in venues which include football and non-football facilities. This shows a significant investment into those communities and we're delighted to see that work is starting already. We know the benefits of enhancements to the pitches, lights and facilities will support our game to grow and enable our community football clubs to provide positive experiences and environments for all. And what New Zealand football is particularly excited about is that this investment into improving facilities, including increased privacy for all our users in changing rooms, also contributes towards clubs having a welcoming and inclusive spaces for the communities and facilities that are much more appropriate and supportive for all genders. The true legacy of co-hosting the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023 in New Zealand lies in the opportunities the whole game offers across our country. And before the first ball of the World Cup has even been kicked, we're starting to see its legacy come to life through the work of football's legacy plan, Aotearoa United Legacy Starts Now. One of the four pillars within our legacy plan is tiaki, or people and places. Its vision is for football to be bigger, better and bolder in connecting our people and communities, improving facilities and making them accessible and truly gender neutral is a key action and outcome for this plan. Today's announcement of facility upgrades throughout Aotearoa and seeing the work starting in many sites makes the tournament's legacy tangible already with just 300 days out from the tournament kicking off. Having a tournament of such global significance on our shores is at its most meaningful when it benefits our communities at such a local level. With investment in potential training sites throughout the motu and in each of our football federations, not just for match venues and not just for football clubs, 
is another way the whole of Aotearoa will benefit from this critical tournament. The level of investment in facilities that can be used by everybody in the community is a prime example of how leveraging high performance sport positively impacts local communities. And from my own experiences as a community-based football player, I couldn't tell you the number of times I've walked into changing rooms that were clearly designed for men, and that my teammates and I simply had to put up with it. And this is a story that will be familiar to many of you who have used community sports clubs and changing rooms at any point, and I imagine across any sport. Having genuinely inclusive facilities shows all members of our communities of all genders that they are welcome and that they are valued. If having the World Cup here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, will inspire members of our communities to get involved in football, having genuinely inclusive facilities will keep them involved in the sport we all love. While so much of the focus during the World Cup will be on the action on the pitch during the tournament, just as significant, perhaps more significant, is the legacy that this tournament will leave in our communities throughout Aotearoa in the days, the weeks, months and years following the World Cup's final whistle, and today's announcement is a perfect example of bringing legacy to life. Namahi. Thank you. I'd just like to say on behalf of Body to City Council, we are absolutely wrapped to be getting these gender-neutral gender um, changing facilities. So thank you, Minister. Thank you, FIFA and MB. Um, and we'd also love to have a team training here. We have a lot of women who play sport here. So these facilities are really going to get used. And we will welcome any team, no matter what it is. Uh, we're into all kinds of sports. And we can't wait for uh, the World Cup next year to be part of the Wellington region, because we are one big region and everyone comes to Porirua because we're culturally diverse. So thank you very much. That brings us to the end. <laughs>